All right. Well, Adam, good to see you. Nice to be here. Welcome back to LA. I know you spent a lot of time here over the years, of course. Yeah, yeah. I lived here at one time. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. What's it like being back for this? This is this is a big deal. This is a kickoff of the tour and a lot of exciting things for you. Yeah. Um, it's just great to be back in the USA, you know. Uh, and I've got a lot of friends here, so. And I've never played the Mayan before, so I'm looking forward to it. It's a lovely theatre. So um, it's be a good kickoff. Yeah. How big of a deal is the kickoff for the for this for the states part of this tour? And I know new music's coming uh, down the pike. It's it's kind of a hmm. kind of a fresh start for American fans that haven't seen you in a while. Yeah, it's been a long time. 17 years. It's been a hell of a long time. But uh, really, we've just been doing a lot of gigs in Europe in the last year, and we were playing right up to the weekend in the UK. So we're kind of we're, we're well rehearsed. Yeah. So we're we're, we're going to do the show we've been doing in. Um, in the UK, pretty much. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I can't wait. I've seen clips of a lot of that. How great has the reception been the last couple of years? Because it looks like the fans have just been fervent and they've kind of yeah, been, been enjoying it all. It's been great. Um, I've never been. I've never really. Uh, it's never really been a great sort of um, review. Never been one to get great reviews <laughs> in the past, but in the last uh, 18 months, it's been amazing. You know, so. Uh, but at the end of the day, as nice as that is, it's for me, it's people coming to see you, you're playing for them 100%. Mm -hmm. um, and they must just be, I suppose, uh, responding to the energy. It's a, quite yeah. an energetic show and the band can really play. Sure. And we're pretty much playing, I think, at whatever period anybody coming as, to the show has got into the, 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 got into the songs, mm -hmm. and there should be something played live that they know and like, as well as a few things they haven't heard from the early part of my career. So right. it's quite a, um, quite an interesting show. Something for everybody. You talk mm. about reviews, and back when I was growing up with your music and mm. you had songs about the press and there were mm. things about mm. Mm. reviews and mm. things like that, I never mm. quite understood it all except mm -hmm. for the fact I just thought you were great and everyone that listened to your music oh. thought you were wonderful. But Thank you. What was it like to finally maybe have that kind of reception now? Was it a whole different kind of thing that people uh, were embracing you across the board? Yeah, I, I think the... Um, Prior to coming to the USA, I, I spent three years, you know, started in 77 around the punk time and there was quite a lot of resistance to um, my band and my work early on. Mm -hmm. From There was like three major publications, The Enemy, Sounds and Melody Maker, yeah. and they were kind of very much into more of the political stuff, uh, Joy Division, New Order and all that stuff, they sure. kind of like that, and I've, I've never really been a political artist. so. Uh, we, we, we didn't get a great reception from them, but then when we went on television and with the King's album, we were pretty much in the charts all the time, and then we came to the USA. So um, I think over here it's uh, pretty much a response to, you know, what you're presenting. There was mm -hmm. no kind of history of, um, of anything prior to that, so it was yeah. fortunately the right time to come. Mm -hmm. And you've always been a consummate showman. How great is mm -hmm. it to be back there on stage now? Is how different does it feel from the old days? How does it feel the same? Uh, well, I get a lot more chance to sing more now because uh, my songs are very vocal. There's lots of vocals on the recordings, and um, with this band, um, you know, four of the four of the five sing, which helps me enormously to just concentrate on the lead. And also, I'm playing mm -hmm. a bit more guitar, which fills the songs out a bit. So, you know, it's it's a fuller sound, and I'm 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 very pleased with it. I think it's it's hundred percent live. There's no samples, no messing about. So it's what you see is what you get. Mm -hmm. mm. You've always been such a creative guy and such a showman mm. and with all your characters and the, and the outfits and stuff like that. How much has that been part of your daily life for years, even when people weren't seeing you? You always have to be doing something creative every day to kind of sustain yourself in that? Um, I think work-wise, to me, going on stage is a, it's like a celebration. Like it's going to, like it's an event for me. So obviously I make an effort to make it look as good as it sounds, you know, to a degree. Um, and I think off stage, you know, I, there's there's places in London that I buy clothes and I enjoy hanging out. So that's always been a consistent thing. I think the hard thing with any career is um, four things: success, survival, um, longevity, and consistency. The mm -hmm. hardest one's consistency is to just keep working, regardless, uh, because sometimes you put a record out that just doesn't, you know, is not is not liked or is a bit far ahead of your audience um, mm -hmm. and you've got to keep rolling you've got to just keep doing it so same with clothes and same with the you know really a, a sense of uh, enjoying life mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. talk about balancing that the evolution of always going forward that you always have mm -hmm. with doing the old songs giving mm -hmm. the fans what mm -hmm. they want how do you find that balance that makes it work for you uh, well on this tour i'm really 
doing. I mean, uh, how I'm doing it. I've, uh, I'm just playing one new track from the live, one track live from the new album. Mm -hmm. It's called Vince Taylor uh, because the actual first single is coming out on November the fourth. That's called Call Zombie. Okay. And then um, the album is being released um, 21st of January next year. So hopefully, with this tour, it's really just to reacquaint the audience with the kind of catalogue and one new song, and then when hopefully come back early next year and do the album. Mm -hmm. tour. So it, it, it's really, you've got to kind of pace it and you've got to really ease the audience back into, um, you know, the this, this stuff that they know and reacquaint them, but also just give them a, a slight taste of what's coming. Yeah. yeah. Is there also a sense of, even beyond reacquainting, but kind of reclaiming kind of your legacy? There's such great songs and so many years of music to bring it back to everyone. Well, these is, this is definitely the, 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 the most powerful live interpretation of the songs. Still got two drummers. Uh, Yola and Andy, and it's really very powerful, powerful, powerful set. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I feel it really is uh, nice to, every night I play the songs, I may have sung them, you know, hundreds of times, but every time I sing them, I'm trying to get them right, I'm trying to get them to sound like the record, and this band, get it, it, it gets it pretty close. It's, it's very, very, um, very impactive sound. So, so in a way, it's opened up the, the songs themselves to a, a, another sort of, another uh, slightly more powerful um, approach. Mm -hmm. What are a few songs that maybe would be surprising that are maybe your favorites on stage that are maybe aren't the most popular songs that you always just enjoy um, to? Um, well, on this tour, there's, there's gonna be, uh, for the US audience, the American audience, there's stuff they wouldn't probably have heard too much of, like I'm doing stuff going back from, from Dirk Wears White Socks and prior to that, some of the B-sides, mm -hmm. some of the early stuff. Um, and But you never know because really, you know, everything that came out on vinyl, um, there'll be a selection from that. Um, you know, sometimes playing some of the quiet songs like Wonderful or um, Never Trust a Man With Egg On His Face or, or whatever, it just mm -hmm. depends. Because we, we, we do have a two hour show and more or less have enough uh, songs rehearsed to switch it. So we change it. Because as you go into, into doing performances, you know, you, you work out which songs work best and um, you kind of adapt. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously, the American audience are, are more acquainted with some of the stuff on the solo albums. Sure. Uh, stuff like Strip or uh, Puss in Boots or um, uh, Death Spin Not Serious. Yeah. Um, and, and so, you know, they're, they're obviously in the set, but they're, yeah. they're surrounded by, you know, other stuff from those, from those albums, mm -hmm. um, which, uh, you know, Room at the Top would be, you know, is in there. So, yeah. so again, it's, it's, it's just giving the audience what they're expecting. There mm -hmm. may be a few surprises as well. I was always digging the music and the, and the escape of it all and the technical ability of all you guys. And there were other girls in the audience that would just always be screaming. How much fun is yeah. that for you still at this point to have uh, that, that side of things still taking place? Well, it's, you know, it lets, lets you know they're there. Huh? Um, <laughs> I, say, I think audiences are, I mean, it's, a, it's very much a two-way street. It's, it, it's like, uh, you know, the energy you get from the audience um, is, is, is very important because you can see very clearly and, and you can feel the audience. I think that's something I like because um, I've done a lot of festivals over the last year in, in Europe. There's loads of festivals and that's one element that you kind of lose is that kind of containment and the drama of being inside. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're inside, people are all in there and it's, it's sort of shut off and you do get a very inter a great sense of intimacy and a very direct response to each song. You can actually see people listening to various songs, you know, certainly the new ones, you know, when they, they hear a new song, it's just because they never heard it, they're listening. Um, so that's a very honest uh, appraisal of a new song. You just give them it cold and it, oh. <laughs> yeah, as far as the new music goes, what can we expect? Cause it's been a while, obviously mm. wonderful with something totally different and mm. amazing in its own right. Mm. You know, what can we expect musically if you can give us just, put it into words at all? Well, this is a, first off it's a, I'm doing a double vinyl edition, so it's 17 songs. And they're all kind of stories of kind of uh, events that have occurred over the last uh, year. Mm -hmm. The first single, Call Zombie, is pretty much my, the story of my living in, uh, I lived in Tennessee for two years. in. Um, and that, that was an experience and so they're, they're kind of stories and they're sort of explanations of where I've been and what's been happening, quite autobiographical, quite personal. Um, no two songs sound the same musically, so it's a bit of a, bit of a journey and I, I, I think that's, people kind of forget that's kind of what the Beatles used to do or the Stones, there was always a different mm -hmm. sort of um, hills and valleys approach, so it's quite a traditional record with that. 
Um, and uh, I'm just trying to make the, you know, the the the, um, the the CD presentation quite beautiful. Make sure the lyrics all on it. It's a very important part. Mm -hmm. And then the you know the download side sort of takes care of itself. But but to me, it's nothing's really changed really yeah. in my approach to presenting this record to any record I've ever made. Mm -hmm. But real fans yeah. that have cared about you and how mm. you've been over the years and maybe didn't know what you're up to, mm. some of those answers maybe here on the record if people yeah. want to dig in and... I think so. I think there's obviously when you discuss things in an interview situation, there's, there's a limitation sure. of time and obviously detail. But I think if you can put it into a lyric, it has a sort of... Uh, an honesty and a, and a mystery to it that the audience are either going to interpret their way, which I've always loved the audience, you know, interpreting the lyrics in their way, not mine, because mm -hmm. that's just basically. But I think it, it opens up certain clues to um, some of the, the issues that have been uh, uh, spoken about in the interviews. So, you know, we'll see. There you go. Mm -hmm. As far as like some of the things you've always been fascinated with in terms of the American Southwest and, mm -hmm. and yeah. the desert, even on the last record, and again, yeah. how much is that still a part of your life just in terms of that creative fun of all that? Um, yeah, I, well, I think that it's, uh, you know, going around the, the USA, it's, 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 it's kind of 50 times, it's like doing 50 Britons, so, yeah. you know, you do all of Britain everywhere you can play and you think, that's it, and um, when you come to the USA, each state, noticeably, is like a different country, different accent, different culture, different, everything's very dramatically different, and you don't realise that until you go around the USA, which I've done on a number of occasions. So coming out with a new band who haven't been around the USA, uh, they, they've got a lot to look forward to. There's mm -hmm. a great deal of uh, history here. I'm about to shoot a video for Call Zombie when I get back in October, which has a kind of uh, American, sort of quasi-American British kind of feel to it. So it's, uh, historically, I'm, I'm still very intrigued. Living in, when I lived in Tennessee, I'd go to Nashville and there'd be the stories of the Civil War. And it's kind of, Quite an interesting, um, uh, quite an interesting uh, source of material for me as a songwriter. Mm -hmm. And to still have ant music in the largest, largest sense still exists today. Was this always expected you'd be doing this at this point in your life? Was there a time you thought you wouldn't uh, be here, kind of celebrating who you are in the catalog? You, did, you don't. You, you know, I, I think it's a blessing to not only be doing it because I, I think you, you you do it if you have to do it. You know, if you uh, right. obviously if you're doing it and you're, you're still loving doing it and you're actually finding, I'm finding a new energy and I'm finding things about it performing now that I, I didn't really have the time to um, appreciate when I was doing it nonstop. When mm -hmm. you take time out from something, you come back into it and I'm pretty much doing it on my terms. I've got my own label so I can kind of creatively, you know, say exactly what I want to do, but also you know, you you do get a there's a certain joy from seeing the improvement in in you as a singer, is it improvement in you as a, a performer, and taking on that that uh, challenge. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I, that that to me is is one of the lovely things to be able to be doing it, and um, you take every show as the as the tantamount show. You know, yeah. every show can be the last show. You got to just go for it. Yeah, the best only get better, Absolutely. so that must be how you, how you feel. And just being back here in L.A., kind of lastly, you made a lot of films, obviously, and did a lot yeah. of TV, and part of this world for a long time, mm. a lot of celebrity friends. Mm. On a fun level, how much is it fun to be part of this again? I don't know if you can hook up any old friends at the shows, or kind of revitalizing a movie career. How much of that goes on when you're here in town? Well, I, uh, when I came over here, and being in L.A., it was kind of, I, I was here as an actor. I was here studying. I took a class with a guy called Harry Mastro George in mm -hmm. the Valley, and that was a very important part of my life and some of the philosophy I was taught there was really a, a very applicable to my music career in terms of um, approach, the attitude to work, learning about how films are made, writing, I got involved in writing uh, a movie and it's, it was an experience that did actually benefit me immensely coming back into music. Um, if I hadn't lived in Los Angeles I wouldn't have met Michael Jackson through Suzanne de Passy was president of Motown and would have done the Motown 25. So really it's some wonderful things came out of, of being here and um, I'm pretty much in contact with uh, the close friends I had before and they'll be coming to the show. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm, uh, it's, uh, it's nice to come back. I don't know if that was the moment or if you just look back, is there one craziest moment at the top of it all, at the height of everything that you always, in the back of your mind, look back to is kind of sum up the original? Craziness. Hopefully, there'll be many more years of craziness to come. But um, how do you mean a, a, a highlight? Either or? either one show that was bigger than the, I don't know if it'd be at Live Aid or something in LA. Maybe someone would expect. Or? I think my favourite show so far, in terms of being on a stage with people that you've grown up 
you know, worshipping would have been the Motown 25, mm -hmm. you know, going on and seeing Marvin Gaye uh, perform and, and uh, you know, working just for one night with these people that um, got you into music in the first place. And the grace, uh, they were very gracious to me and, 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 and I, I, I was thoroughly honoured to be there. So that was not only a great challenge when you're, you know, 10 foot away from Michael Jackson doing the debut in the moonwalk right. for the first time in history and then, you, then you're on next. So it was a challenge, but it was a wonderful um, celebration of music. So, so that would have been creatively one of the loveliest evenings mm -hmm. in my career. Now, to me, you coming out of a pirate ship or coming down the uh, stairs and doing the hat is just mm, as important a mm, uh, musical mm -hmm. statement that uh, Michael's moonwalk. So, real pleasure. Hopefully, to, thank you. To talk very to much. you. Thank yeah. you very much. Congratulations thank you. on on being here. Thank you. Yeah. A quick little. Thing.